Today, we're working on an exhaust manifold for a diesel Pro Mod Corvette. Tony Durhammer from Hammer Tech Race Cars brought me this exhaust manifold that we need to do some modifications on. This thing is 316L stainless steel, and it's thick and it's hard. So I just drew a block up basically of the area that I need to machine. And you know, it's really going to be a tedious job. This here is just basically um, uh, analyzes the program to make sure that we're not gonna have any tool crashes and things like that. It's gonna have a flange on it and it's also going to be chamfered on the edge. This is my tool lineup. You see I'm progressively getting the drill uh, bits a little bit bigger each time being it's going to take so many uh, laps to get this thing done. So once I write the program, I download it into my old Miltronics here. And, you know, this is a Centurion 5 or 6 or something like that. I'm kind of new to it after I bought this machine. But anyway, I wanted to show you how crazy I had to get with mounting this manifold. It's actually in the vise at an angle. And anybody that knows the machines anything, when you hold something on an angle on straight edges and they're hardened, it doesn't want to stay. So I ended up putting some stands on it. But these adjustable stands that you see that are actually, you know, keeping the angles correct, these are actually clutch stands off our top fuel car that we can't use anymore. I bought this little gizmo on Wish, actually. Yeah, they're from China, not so great of a deal, but this thing actually works pretty good. So what it does is once it touches the part, you know, it lights it up, makes a sound, and that tells you exactly the location of the part, say minus a hundred thousandths, you know, if it's a 200 thousandths diameter ball. So I do this to establish the X, Y, zero point of where I'm starting the machining process from. Once I establish that, now what I'm going to do with the tool selection that I have is I'm going to zero each tool. Yeah, you could have offsets and do all this other stuff, but you know, when it's one-off projects like this, it's just as easy to take the tool and zero it off the top. I use a piece of paper and you know, it's a thou and a half or so thick. And that way I run it down to the paper drags underneath the actual tool. And that tells me that's my Z point or my zero start of machining the part. So I'll do this with each one of the tools. There's seven tools, I believe, on this job. And um, then we'll get ready to load them in the carousel. Each tool has its own number. And it's usually in the progression of the program itself. You know, step one, step two, step three, that kind of thing. So I um, basically got everything loaded up into the carousel and we'll start machining this thing. 316L stainless is, is pretty damn hard. And so basically the spindle RPM is down and the feed rate is lower also than what you would have for normal steel and things like that. Here, I'm just basically making sure that the pilot holes that I'm starting are in the right location, that I didn't screw something up and everything's on point. Next, we're just gonna shut the doors on this deal and let this thing eat. When you're machining stuff like this, the program runs pretty slow. I'm trying to save the tooling. I want to sit there and mow through this thing, put a bunch of tooling in it. Uh, so it does run pretty slow. So I'll speed this puppy up and we'll get to a point here. We can take a look at what's going on. So once it gets the holes drilled, it comes down and we mill out the center section. Then we come back and mill the flange on the top. After I look at that, make sure it's okay. But you can look down inside here. You, that piece is actually welded to the manifold. That's my buddy Ryan right there. He stopped by and brought me some beer. Check it out. It's even on the machine. Anyway, we're coming in here right now and we're chamfering the areas uh, across the top and the bottom just to clean up all the shavings and stuff. So we'll pull this puppy off and we'll see exactly if we've made this right or not. I'm really uh, surprised at the finish that this thing had. Um, you know, I did take my time, so that's probably why it ended up so nice, but normally I would have sped that whole deal up and I'm sure it would have been, you know, chattered up or something like that, but it really did uh, come out pretty nice. So we'll take this thing off and take it to my old buddy. So let's go buy Hammer Tech race car and we'll let Tony tell us about what the hell these holes are for and what their purpose is. Okay, we're at Hammer Tech Race Cars, and uh, this is the manifold that we machined. And Tony's going to describe a little bit 
why these holes are even in it. So one of the big things we try to control, especially with the diesel stuff is shaft speed on our turbo. So you think of it like in thousands of RPM, this turbo is gonna be doing 120,000, 125,000. That's RPM. crazy. So you wanna to try to keep that under control. And the only way to control that is how hard you drive it. So your drive pressure controls everything. That's what these holes are for. So we'll actually come out of these holes and we'll fabricate some tubes to a wastegate. And then the wastegate is under spring pressure. So at like these are 45 PSI. So at 45 PSI at drive pressure, they'll start cracking these open and actually bleeding the pressure off into the exhaust. So, so there's going to be two of them on this one? There'll be two of these on it. So Jesus. that'll actually drive the turbo less at a higher pressure. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. So it'll have to just snake all the way around to get that thing out where you need it to be? Yeah, The we can throw it on here real quick. So that's one of the, the hardest things about these pro mods is they're super, super, super small and everything on these is... That's right, folks. This is a pro mod diesel corvette this is tony's second one <laughs> so we'll we'll hang the turbo off of here and then the discharge will come out and it'll go through um, our max spooler and then it'll come into our intake tube so there's no intercooler it's only nitrous that cools off the charge air so will this one have water injection or no just nitrous it's, he's still debating it but if we can do it with nitrous we're going to leave the water off just for weight purposes gotcha so, so the the piping will actually come down. So this one will be just a 90, and then this one will be a 90 that kind of 45s down. So there'll be two of these pipes that come back, and they'll 45 down to a wastegate that hangs about here. And then the other one will be right here, and it'll blow right into the exhaust that'll come out. And come oh, out wow. Turbo. That's crazy. That's a lot of fab. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a, a lot of thinking to get everything to fit inside. Oh, yeah. Because the hood... The hood's so low on these, it comes down and it actually curves up to about the cowls about right here. So it's only, you know, you have this much room to fit. How high do the there. injectors stick up from that? Like, um, is that the thing that you're clearancing mostly or no? Yeah, the, the tallest part on it's actually the injectors will come up and then they'll be about two inches to the top of the rail yeah. and the lines. So that's the highest point. That's crazy. Well, good work, man. Yeah. We're at Hammer Tech Race Cars, man. And this is the diesel guru <laughs> for fixing a lot of people's screw ups. Yeah. And uh, man, he just does crazy, crazy fab work. Thanks, Tony. Appreciate Thanks. it. All right. Here's just a couple of the projects that Tony's going on. And of course, this is the ProMon uh, Corvette with a Wagner motor in it, all billet aluminum, you know, coming style diesel engine. Uh, just just crazy to see uh you know what he's done to this this is a truck that was brought to him it was like it sold to a guy and it actually was a piece of crap all he's done is come in here and have to fix move you know move pipe and everything else this is another one that he's doing um it's just amazing how much work goes into these diesels and how much money these people are spending on this it's a whole different class and hey, check this out. There's even a dog bowl there where they used to run an intercooler on the inside. And now, you know, a lot of these guys are running nitrous as an intercooler. But it's a, it's a great thing to see all these diesels, a new class coming out. And um, it, yeah, I know it's been around, but it's new to me. All I know is this top fuel shit.